because of the work that I do as a sex worker, this man thought that he could do whatever he wants because he knew I wasn't going to go to the cops. Thank you for joining us for another episode of On the Horizon, a podcast about what's on the horizon for sex workers and how to navigate it. I'm Jesse Sage, and you can find me on Twitter at sapiotextual and at jessiesage.com. And I'm Melrose Michaels, and you can find me at Melrose Michaels on social and melrosemichaels.com. Just a reminder, if you are enjoying the podcast on Apple, please leave us a five-star rating and review because it really helps us to grow as a podcast and better share information from our guests to the sex work community as a whole. Last but not least, if you want to support the podcast, please go to anchor.fm forward slash horizon spelled W-H-O-R-I-Z-O-N to become a premium subscriber of On the Horizon, which unlocks two bonus episodes on the 8th and 22nd of each month with tons of extra exclusive footage from ourselves and our guests. This episode of On the Horizon is sponsored by DMCA Force. DMCA Force is the authorized DMC agent for the largest online creators and the platforms that they monetize. DMCA Force protects models, musicians, writers, videographers, artists, and tons of other creatives publishing their works online. With DMCA Force, you get 24 7 automated monitoring, flagging, and removal of stolen and pirated content. They use metadata and keywords relating to your work in collaboration with search engines to remove even the 10 to 15% of content on ghost sites that can't typically be scrubbed from the internet. They even offer the ability to fingerprint content and digitally watermark it as an added layer of security to protect the art you work so hard creating. Join DMCA Force today. Welcome back to another episode of On the Horizon. Welcome. Happy to have y'all. Yeah, this is a serious episode. This is a serious episode. So um, it's not a surprise if you've listened to season one um, or are in any sex work spaces that sex work is often aligned and the narrative around sex work is often related to trafficking, sex trafficking, Mm -hmm. human trafficking. Um, So we really want the public and non-sex workers or people who aren't in our spaces to understand what that difference is and why that narrative is false and why um, this education needs to be provided. Yeah. And so the, the way that we've set up this this whole season is what sex workers can teach you about something we uh, about, you know, X and in this case about trafficking and exploitation. Um, we actually thought that the best thing to do for this episode would to be to bring on a sex worker who's also been a, vic- a victim of trafficking. Um, and so we have an amazing ge- guest, London Bridges, who is very open with her own story of being trafficked and about what that experience looked like, how that happened um, for her, and also like how... How to heal. How to heal, to how heal. sex work and how like working through like... Um, her own like sexuality has also allowed her to heal from those experiences. Yeah. And I, it's interesting to also add that she's a, a sub. She identifies mm-hmm. as a sub. So the, it really confronts a lot of people's, I think, I guess, challenges mm-hmm. with exploitation and sex work and sex trafficking mm-hmm. because she's all of the – the opposite ideas people expect in, yeah. in the way that her story uh, has unfolded. So, mm-hmm. I mean, there's no one better to to speak on this, I don't think, than London. And I think we should just let her take it away. And mm-hmm. then also, I want to provide like a little bit of a warning. Like if you have similar experiences or if this is going to be a little bit uh, too much to kind of process, yeah. it's it's heavy. So yeah. be warned. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's get to it. Let's get into it. Who misses free and affordable ads without the anti-sex work rhetoric? Assembly 4 is a team of sex workers and technologists from Melbourne, Australia, aiming to bring back free and fair advertising to the sex work community. They also give back to organizations based in harm reduction, sex work, and education. Stepping away from the clunky design of traditional platforms, their platform, Trist.link, is a refreshing and well-needed change in both presentation and mission. It is free to join and open to all. In the words of an A4 user, from the policies to the language, to the advice and tips, it makes such a big difference to feel encouraged and supported instead of policed. 
London Bridges is an Atlanta-based burlesque entertainer, sensual healer, and erotic kink model. London facilitates self-love workshops, sensual fitness classes, and curates sex-positive events. London's work is informed by her experience as a pro-sub, sex work activist, and divine feminine identity. She is currently open to discussing her experiences as a survivor of sex trafficking. Welcome, London Bridges. It's like really great to have you on the show today. Yes, absolutely. It's wonderful to meet you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Do you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about the work that you do? Okay, great. Um, My name is London Bridges. I am a burlesque entertainer and pro BDSM provider, as well as a spiritual advisor. I'm based in Atlanta, but you know, I travel. <laughs> yeah. I travel. I'm I'm here in these streets. Um, <laughs> I definitely am. Um, I have been in the sex working industry for about 12 years now. I started off as a stripper and okay. transitioned into burlesque and BDSM and being a spiritual advisor and adding kink into my healing work as well. Tell us a little bit about your spiritual advising. Mm. Yes. So um, I provide readings. Uh, That's one thing I do. I provide readings. I make spiritual baths. I provide spiritual baths. But I also started um, adding kink into What do spiritual baths look like? So spiritual baths, it's basically you could attract or take away whatever. You could attract whatever you want and whatever serves purpose into your life. Or you could take away whatever is no longer serving your purpose. Mm -hmm. So like recently, I just did a cut and clear bath because I felt like I had like a lot of blockages. So Mm. I... Um, the like a bath would entail, you know, water. Um, it could be uh, rainwater, uh, well water. But when we say well water, you know, we're not back in the day when you know my ancestors <laughs> were doing the mm-hmm. work. So well water could mean like you know faucet water, mm-hmm. um, ocean water, um, and then different colognes. Like right now, I have you know my. Florida water here, um, any other colognes um, in it that could help um, with the attraction or taking away. And then also herbs because we do, um, well, elements can have a lot of entities and spiritual workings within them to help us with any spiritual work that we need to do. Mm. So um, the cut and clear bath that I did, it helped release any blockages that were in my path. And for me this season, and I think for the new moon that was going on, it was, I was creating the blockages Mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. Nobody else but me. I had to hold myself accountable. And um, when I did that, man, listen, I was exhausted because it's spiritual work (laughs) at the end of the day. It's Mm -hmm. it's a lot of work. And, you know, it was a three-day process. And, you know, I like to think that it worked. <laughs> mm, that's so that. neat. Yeah. Do you incorporate that into your sex work? Like, do you provide those kind of services for clients? Yeah. So um, sometimes I do cuddling. I do professional cuddling or even mm. like when I do um, as a pro sub or even like a dom, I will like the aftercare or even mm. like during it, I would do like a spiritual bath afterwards um, because, you know, it's a lot of work, you know, you know, speaking as yeah. from a substance point, we go into like our subspace, you know, yeah. we're like basically in space. And then to help bring us down, I like to utilize, you know, that spiritual bath to mm-hmm. bring us back to earth and to also like whatever energy we get, we give to the Dom, mm-hmm. you know, let's, let's take that a little a back a little bit more yeah. or even also like, if I'm doing, cause like I said, I like to do um, healing with my, with my kink sometimes. And I like to, you know, ask what's going on with the, with, um, I, you could say sub, um, cause technically I'm topping, but I, I think of it as like a healing session. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I ask them, like, you know, what's going on with their life? We have a, you know, talking session, you know, beforehand. And then from then, I know exactly what type of herbs to use and what type of oils to work with. Because you could also use utilize oils, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, you know, if you're doing sensual touch or anything, mm-hmm. you know, make sure to use, like, if they have money problems and money blockages, let me get my money oil and rub my mm-hmm. money oil on the client. I love that. That's really cool. Yeah, that's a really unique approach. Yeah. Absolutely. 
So like this episode, we're looking at um, what sex workers can teach people about like trafficking, especially given like the intense like trafficking narratives that are going on in um, our culture right now. And I know you have a um, a background in that. So I was wondering if you wanted to share a little bit of your story or um, or if you're not comfortable with that, if you could talk about like what the difference is between those things and like how uh, we can educate well, how we can yeah. educate people about it. Yeah, um, I could give you a little bit of background in my story. Um, I was very young. I was, you know, 25, 26, mm-hmm. just got out of a relationship, homeless, really didn't have anything Um anyone really for the matter. And um, I was in the strip club Mm -hmm. and, you know, being black, we, a lot of us black people, we don't know a lot of our history. We don't know a lot about ourselves. And Mm -hmm. at that moment, I finally realized, oh, I'm black. Like we were queens. We were queens. We were goddesses. We have our own spiritual practices. Like Mm -hmm. I was very angry at the time because I was watching, um, I watched this documentary called Hidden Colors, Mm -hmm. which I always say like, it's a great documentary, but for somebody who really knows nothing is very naive on the culture of themselves, black people. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's something that you should watch just starting to learn because it's very Mm -hmm. extreme. It's a whole, it's a four part series two hours long it's a lot of knowledge like Mm, thrown at you yeah and then you could easily become angry like I did and want to run and go after things so me I was going after spiritual awareness and wanting to learn about my roots as a black woman Mm -hmm. so this girl that I initially I would make money with we traveled to different states to go to clubs and make money Mm -hmm. Like I trusted her and it was very rare where I trusted people in the strip club Mm -hmm. and she was one person that I trusted. And I was telling her, you know, I watched this documentary and I'm really like, I want to know about myself. You know, I want to learn about, you know, African spirituality. I want to know like a Mm -hmm. lot. And then she was like, yeah, I I know a guy who who knows a lot of things. So I'm like, put me on. Yeah. 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 And they, I met him and from that moment on the so she she disappeared off the face of the earth i don't mm-hmm. know where she went um and he deemed me his godchild quote unquote and basically in the spiritual community you know godfather godmother spiritual mm-hmm. mom like these are teachers these are people mm-hmm. who are supposed to yeah. guide you towards your spiritual path and he said that in order for me to cleanse me of my sins um, and everything that I've like done in my past, he would we would have to do it through sexual, you know, sexual sexual stuff. Mm-hmm. And initially that was rape because um, I didn't want to do it. Yeah. And I had to do it. So I became his sex slave from that point on. Oh and gosh. doing stuff for him, working, doing services, working, mm-hmm. bringing him money, all that stuff um, that I had to do um, for two years that I was under that situation. And then eventually I decided to um, escape. Now, mm-hmm. a lot of people, you know, I've done a couple of interviews and a lot of people will say, oh, you know, that was just a relationship. She wasn't trafficked. And it's like, no, because I didn't, I don't really talk about the full experience that I've been through. Mm -hmm. But I do want to list off some things that, um, different forms of sex trafficking that I had posted on my page. Mm -hmm. Um, So bonded labor, involuntary sex slavery, debt bondage and involuntary servitude amongst migrant laborers, Involuntary domestic servitude, forced child child labor, child soldiers, sex trafficking, and prostitution. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure people know this because it's very important because a lot of people like pimping culture, prostitution, like you you could be sex trafficked into that situation. Mm -hmm. And then children exploitation and commercial sex. So out of all those bulletins that I read off, Four of them I experienced in my um, 
in my situation. So yeah. the um, involuntary sex slavery, the debt bondage, because I had to go out and make money for him. And he kept saying that I wasn't, I still owed him money. I still owed him money. Mm-hmm. Um, the involuntary st- domestic servitude was something that I definitely experienced with him. Mm-hmm. Obviously the involuntary sex slavery as well. Yeah. So that was yeah. something that I went through for about two years and it was I wasn't, you know, locked up in a cage like they know that like they show you in like mm-hmm. the movies and stuff. He basically, you know, manipulated me mentally, spiritually, mm-hmm. um, threatened my family, threatened me saying things like I would if if I to, if I had to, if he told me to, I would have to jump off a bridge. And I was so heavily under his like manipulation that mm-hmm. if he told me to jump off of the Throg's Neck Bridge in the Bronx, I would have jumped off that bridge. Wow. Do you think do you feel like that happened gradually? Um yes and no. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, when I first met him, a part of me, there is because I didn't know myself and because I didn't really trust myself, I, I my intuition was screaming at me mm-hmm. and I wanted to say no. Yeah. I wanted to say, you know, get out. But I, I yeah. felt paralyzed mm-hmm. and I knew that it wasn't right, but I was afraid to leave Mm. and eventually it got to a point where it was like all right well I'm deep in and the things that he was telling me I'm like all right I don't want to give up I can't give up you know Mm -hmm. this is my quote unquote this is my spiritual growth and whatever he's telling me I'm going to like make it to the end and, you know, Mm. be cleansed and be healed. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it grew. The, the manipulation definitely grew gradually because, you know, he kind of forced that relationship and one side, he was like really kind and making me think that I could trust him all the time. And then the next minute he was like the devil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it definitely, um, grew more and more because you know eventually like my spirit you know a lot of you know us black folks we st- we talk about the sunken place all the time and you know a lot of people they joke around about it but it's like it's a real place you know there would be times when I'd be like in my dreams or even just like daydreaming and I would see myself like in a dark place surrounded by nothing just nothing but nothingness yeah. and wondering like how did I get here You know, Mm -hmm. where, where am I? Like, how did I get to this place? And I was walking the streets like a zombie. I was drained. You know, we, we, we all know about, you know, energy vampires, spiritual vampires. Mm -hmm. And this man definitely was draining my energy. And it got to a point where I was just looking crazy. I was feeling Mm -hmm. crazy. I was, I wasn't feeling like myself. I was feeling drained and Mm -hmm. I didn't know, like, how did, how did I get to this point? Because this is not who I am. Yeah. yeah. So trafficking, uh, sex trafficking is in the, you know, in, is in the news a lot. And I'm curious, like, what you think that the media gets right and gets wrong about that, given that, like, you've been in that, um, in that place? Do you feel like the representations of it, like, represent your experience? Or do you feel like there's a disconnect there? There's definitely a disconnect. You know, the media only portrays one part of it, you know, well, two parts of it. You know, you have the human sex trafficking, you know, Mm -hmm. with women and, you know, you have the movie like uh, Taken, you know, you have those movies and that's how the media portrays it. And then you have like Mm -hmm. the child sex trafficking and, you know, how they're like building all these laws that hurt sex workers, but they're Mm -hmm. supposed to help kids and the, um, the sex trafficking for kids. And there's, it's supposed to help them. But in reality, you're only giving us one side of what it is. And then Mm -hmm. that's where, you know, I do get the backlash from people stating like, Oh, this is not sex trafficking. And it's like, no, it is, you know, pimp culture is sex trafficking. Like Mm -hmm. a lot of people don't think that even now, um, I had read this article that Jasmine has sent me about um, 
OnlyFans models, what we're what they're going through right now, because, you know, OnlyFans models, some of them, they don't manage their own accounts because yeah. let's be real, it's a lot to handle. Yeah. And a lot of these men, let's be real, men yeah. will mm-hmm. come to these models and say, hey, you know, I have money. I'll help you. Um mm-hmm. I'll help you with your uh, account. I'll give you photo shoot, video shoot. I'll give you money for this. I'll pay for this. And then next thing you know, the model is locked out of her account, not able to get in. And the quote unquote manager is like, yeah, um, you owe me like 10 bands Mm -hmm. and you're going to be working with these guys Mm -hmm. and until you pay off your debt. And in reality, their debt is not going to be paid off because they control basically their lives and they are now exploiting, sexually exploiting them. And a lot of people who look at the work that we do, they're like, oh, well, you put yourself in that situation. That's not sex trafficking. And it's like, no, I just wanted help. (laughs) I just I just wanted help. And because Mm -hmm. of the work that I do, these people are feeling like they could exploit us because they can, because we don't have any protection. So now right. we go to the cops, even my situation, you know, this was off of spiritual guidance, but because of the work that I do as a sex worker, this man thought that he could do whatever he wants mm-hmm. because he knew I wasn't going to go to the cops. Yeah. Yeah. There's no resources. Yeah. I mean, I think the point that you're bringing up is really important, which is that like the laws the anti-sex work laws actually keep people in, in these situations. In these situations. Yeah. It definitely does. And it's 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 heartbreaking because, you know, at the end of the day, we're humans, we're daughters, we're mothers. You know, mm-hmm. we are, you know, people that deserve protection just because we utilize our bodies to make money and make a business out of it. And it's not even just like everyone makes money off of women. (laughs) Everyone makes money Mm -hmm. off of women's bodies. So when we decide to take the power and do it for ourselves and say, you know, fuck the middleman, I am the middleman. I'm the end man. I'm the first man. (laughs) (laughs) Everyone gets mad. And then now it's like, all right, let's take from them. Let's abuse them. Let's do this let's do that and it's like no we need protection decriminalize mm-hmm. our work so we could protect ourselves and be protected within the work that we do yeah yeah, yeah. it's interesting too because i, I want to just point out and i don't we don't have to stand this part of it very long but the part that you said you felt paralyzed because so many people listening to this who don't understand what it is to be manipulated by another person mm-hmm. and already in a distress situation are going to have the first thing come to mind. Like, why mm-hmm. didn't you just leave? You weren't, you weren't locked to this person, whatever. But when you think fight or flight and these survival mechanisms that are built into you that are evolving with present day, you know, mm-hmm. the way the ecosystem and the environment is for someone now in the modern world, it's a, evolved to be fight, flight, fawn or freeze. And there's these other parts of that Mm -hmm. survival mechanism that don't look the way most people suspect. So like if you're listening and and you've had that reaction where you've been paralyzed or frozen in in the height of something traumatic, Mm -hmm. that's an acceptable reaction. That is a way to survive something traumatic. Like that's valid, you know? Exactly. And um, you, you make a great point on that because in that situation, like you said, like I said, like I didn't know what I was going through. I didn't, I was very naive. I had no knowledge and I was told not to do any research. And me, I'm a, I'm a book nerd. I like to do research, especially mm-hmm. if like I'm put into anything. Yeah. And, you know, him telling me these things, I'm really, because I, you know, one thing about, you know, trafficking or any type of abuse, when you add a woman to bring you you know, your, your victims, it's that woman that makes you think like, yeah. Oh, yeah. this, this might be real. This might, this might yeah. be okay because the woman makes you feel comfortable. This young lady, I trusted her, you mm-hmm. know, I, I knew her. I didn't hear anything bad about her in the yeah. club, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know, this don't seem right, but I don't think she would put me on to something like this. So let me, you know, let me thug this out. Let me see if it, you know, if this is something that I should be doing. And, you know, he was doing the same to me. He was trying to get me to, to recruit, quote unquote, recruit other women, other sex workers. But he didn't know that I was like the only sex worker in my family and of my friends. Mm -hmm. So he thought that 
all my peoples were also homeless, were mm-hmm. also had nothing and had nothing to, yeah. to basically live for. And it mm-hmm. was trying to find a purpose. But in reality, I was the only person who was living like that. Mm-hmm. And because that I wasn't able to like bring him people because I didn't have any friends in the strip club yeah. that I could say, hey, you know, you need help. You, you, you need money. You out here scamming. I got you. You know, mm-hmm. I don't there wasn't situations like that for me. So, you know, that, you know, understanding like that I didn't know or trust myself. And, you know, even going back to like that spirit, the spiritual work, you know, Mm -hmm. I was chasing something. I was looking for something and Mm -hmm. I didn't know the light that I had inside of me that, you know, I, that if I wanted to access my ancestors that I had to look within myself, that if Mm -hmm. I wanted to heal, if I wanted to seek healing, that I had to heal within myself and look within myself. I know now, you know, it took this trauma to realize that, but you know, that's why now I do the work that I do because I want people to know, like you are source, you are your own Mm -hmm. source of healing. And it's, it starts with you. And then, you know, when it's time for you to get a spiritual teacher, your spirit guides will bring that person into your life with, without you seeking it. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That. That's really interesting. Yeah. I mean, I think another, another valuable thing that came out of what you were saying is that like, you know, going back to the other, the other point that you made, which is that like the criminalization of sex work is something that like just makes things more dangerous for people, including like people who are suffering um, and being exploited. But also another thing that you brought up, I think is that um, it's being in, conditions that are you know it's not having access to resources that make you more vulnerable you know so instead of um you know enacting laws that create more vulnerable (laughs) populations right maybe we actually provide resources that limit the vulnerability of already marginalized populations exactly and especially at that time you know being a stripper in new york is not easy. You know, it's very, very racist out there. And a lot of us, you know, I was coming from making seven bands a week to making, you know, like $300 a night. And I'm just like, what's happening here? And it's like, we were getting pushed out of our clubs. We were getting pushed into the street. In New York, there was a stripper strike going going on because of how people were being like, how Mm -hmm. people of color were being treated in the clubs and, you know, bartenders were making the money. Only Hispanic people were, were being allowed to be put in the clubs. I got kicked out of my club, um, out of nowhere, being told that I was drunk and I don't even drink it. I don't even drink. How are you telling Mm -hmm. me I got fired for being belligerently drunk? So now you're lying on me and forcing me out of my money. Mm -hmm. So it was to a point where it's like, where am I going to get money? Like, how am I going to do this? I, I need something. And I didn't have community in, in the in the strip club community. There's no community. We're taught to like work against each other. Mm-hmm. You know, we're t- and it's different from like, you know, right now I'm in the burlesque and BDSM community where it's community. We work yeah. together. We help each other give resources. It's basically ran by women for the most part. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I'm in a di- such a different space where I do I can go to people like Jasmine and King, you know, mm-hmm. and ask them for advice and see like, hey, you know, I'm tapping into being a professional submissive. What can I do so I could do this safely? And mm-hmm. King was like, hey, you know, find yourself a, a dungeon that's safe and make sure it's a safe yeah. dungeon, you know vetting process is very important. This is Mm -hmm. what you should do with your vetting process. Even, you know, looking up, you know, Mistress Marley, you know, how she does like applications and she says, you know, my people don't come to me without presenting identification. I'm like, oh, Mm -hmm. ID, (laughs) that's Mm -hmm. a thing. And you can do that. And it's just like having that community of people who are, educating you is so Mm -hmm. important and it's it's fucked up because we're getting Mm deplatformed for even just educating our people right yeah Yeah. i mean that's how i learned too from other sex workers like this is how to be safe and this is how you vet people and this and you can demand id and you can demand protection and you can demand all this stuff but i think that like i think you're right i think it's really sad that these like 
um, anti-trafficking laws like make it impossible, like make it much harder to share that kind of information yeah. that keeps everybody safe. Mm hmm. Those anti-trafficking well, um, laws, honestly, they don't do anything. As somebody who is a survivor from mm -hmm. sex trafficking, it has it does nothing for victims, yeah. really. It does nothing. Do you have any advice for I mean, this is going to be a twofold question, but do you have advice for people who are in situations that like they would like to get out of? That's the first part. And the second part is like, what sort of advice do you have for like healing those sorts of like traumatic experiences? Yeah. So um, if you are in a situation like that or you become approached with a situation like that, definitely trust yourself, mm -hmm. you know, trust your intuition Trust your gut because, you know, we have we have them boyfriends that are saying like, oh, you know, your intuition is not crazy. I'm not cheating. Your intuition is crazy. I'm not cheating. I'm, I, you're fucking crazy, bitch. You crazy. It's like, no, I'm not crazy. And then the bitch calls your phone and you're like, I knew it. I knew I was right. No, don't let these men tell you you're crazy. You know, yeah. God, you are God. You know, you're a mm -hmm. woman. You know, God gave you this gift so mm -hmm. to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, right. so if your gut mm -hmm. is going crazy, if your chest feels tight when you become you know, around person, somebody like me, my gut goes crazy. My chest becomes tight and my mm -hmm. skin boils up when I'm around people I'm not supposed yeah. to be around. Mm -hmm. You know, that's my intuition screaming at me like warning, warning, leave. Yeah. You know, and, that, and it, I had to learn that from a traumatic situation. But. At that moment, when I was in that situation, when I was about to be, when I was presented with that situation, my mm -hmm. body was doing that. Yeah. But I didn't trust her. I didn't yeah. trust myself. So mm -hmm. learning to trust yourself and your intuition because you're not here to harm yourself. You're here to protect yourself. You know, mm -hmm. you're always protected. You have your ancestors, your guides, your spirit guides, your angels. There's a lot of people that are unseen. Your unseen team, I always call them your 10,000 unseen team are here protecting you. So do not second guess whenever something says, oh, this is not right. Trust yourself, believe yourself and exit, you know, mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. And, you know, especially when it comes to leaving, you know, when you start thinking over when you say I want to leave, but then you start thinking about all the things that they projected onto you, mm -hmm. you know, saying like, oh, this is going to happen and this is going to happen. No, your first thought was I'm going to leave. I need yeah. to leave. Don't think about anything else. And I know it's hard. Believe me, I came yeah. from that situation. I know mm -hmm. it's very hard, but it took that one moment for me to trust mm -hmm. myself because I was supposed to go back and forth to New York every few months. And I was, but there was that one moment where I felt like my, my grandmother, God rest her soul, came into me and was like, don't go, please don't go. Because mm -hmm. if you go, you're not going to, you're not going to survive. Yeah. And I believed that thought. I felt it. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to New York this time. And that was my first time defying him. And then that's when the healing process happened. So mm. for your second um, part of the question, um, the healing process, again, it starts with self. Mm -hmm. You know, but also I had community. I had uh, my soul sister, um, Naomi Vuce, shout out to her. She was supposed to be my burlesque coach at first, but she was put into my life to help heal me. Mm -hmm. You know, she held me like a child. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she she introduced me into spiritual baths, you know, the proper way. Mm -hmm. And she taught me about my hands hey. and about me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's, it, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it, that's beautiful. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's very important, you know, that you have, you know, you have a sisterhood within yourself so that you could reach out to the sisters that are around you, you know, you're um, talking to yourself. Me, the first thing that I did was because um, I had a podcast and my podcast host, she told me that she would like because she doesn't like to write. And me, I'm a writer, but I had so much in my head mm -hmm. and so much, you know, thoughts going on that. I had to speak it out loud. And she was like, voice note, you know, she didn't know anything about what I was going through, mm -hmm. but she was like, I voice note. So one day when I first escaped from, um, from this man, I voice noted myself and 
even to this day, I still listen to it and I burst out in tears because I couldn't believe that that was me. And I still voice note to this day and I listen to the voice notes leading up to today. And I'm like, wow, I'm changed. You can hear it in your voice. You know, mm-hmm. you can hear it. You can see it. Even if you record yourself, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. talk to yourself, speak out loud to yourself, but also speak greatness into yourself, you know, rather than saying that, you know, I was stupid, I was naive, you know, I I was, you know, how dare I? And it's like, no, you know, you were young, you didn't know any better, but you're growing. You're yeah. a very intelligent young lady because you left, you know, yeah. because you escaped yeah. and you, and mm-hmm. you trusted yourself, you know, meditation, sitting by some water, sitting in nature. One of my favorite movies is, you know, Pocahontas because, you know, I mean, I know the real story of Pocahontas, but like (laughs) when she's talking to Grandmother Willow, she's talking Mm -hmm. to damn trees. Our ancestors lie in nature. They're in the animals, you know, speak. Don't you're not crazy. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You're not crazy if you're speaking to nature. Nature is always going to send you messages, you know, me you know, whatever you find healing and I also find healing in, you know, BDSM, you know, I'm, mm-hmm. I identify as one of my identities is a little, mm-hmm. you know, my little space is my healing space. I yeah. love it there. You know, people will talk shit and be like, oh, you, you, you have daddy issues. You know, I'm, I age regress from the ages four to seven because one, that's one of the spaces that I've never experienced any type of trauma, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and mm. Also, I'm able to just be free and I'm able to color and have tea parties and play Mm -hmm. dress up and not worry about the outside world and just worry about myself. Yeah. You know, it's okay to be selfish as you're healing. Let yourself be taken care of. Yeah. Exactly. I love it, man. Listen, I'm spoiled. (laughs) I am spoiled, spoiled, spoiled. Just take me outside so that in my pretty dress so I could fly around like a fairy and yeah. feed me on time because <laughs> I need to be fed on time. <laughs> feed me yeah. on time and let me do whatever I want to do. You know, mm-hmm. your healing, it, it, there's no limit to your healing and there's no exact way on how you do your healing. I went from, mm-hmm. from doing spiritual baths to having tea parties with my teddy bears. Yeah. You know, there's, it, it's yeah. different in different ways. You know, how mm-hmm. you and your spirit says, this is how I want to heal today. Do it. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I love, uh, I love the idea of speaking greatness into yourself. Yes. You and know? the voice notes. Cause your voice says so much. Like when mm-hmm. I go back and listen to even like my old podcast, when I listen to episodes, I'm like, Oh my God, like I can tell where I'm hurting. Like you yeah. can hear it. So mm-hmm. that's just beautiful. I love mm-hmm. that. That's a great place to wrap it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing yeah, your, your story and your wisdom. So <laughs> absolutely. where can people find you and your work? Yeah, you could find me on my website, LondonBridges.co. Um, no M, just C-O. Okay. And um, you could find me on all social platforms, London Bridges. I mean, I'm sorry, London Level Up, all mm-hmm. social platforms, London Level Up. And, you know, you could look me out, look out for my spiritual work or even, you know, dance classes or even my burlesque shows that I'm going to be putting together and having. That's nice. Amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Obviously, this is very impactful for me. I really, <laughs> really love this interview. This is amazing. So thank oh, you. Thank you. Thank you. This segment of today's episode is sponsored by sex.com, one of the absolute best content creator platforms out there. It looks better than any other, has a higher level of security than any other, and boasts over 3 million unique visitors a day scrolling through viral looped adult short form videos. Sex.com is like, well, (laughs) sex itself. A lot of people do it. Some just do it much, much better than the others. Sex.com. If you're going to do it, do it right. Thank you for joining us for another episode of On the Horizon, a podcast about what's on the horizon for sex workers and how to navigate it. I'm Jesse Sage, and you can find me on Twitter at sapiotextual and at jessiesage.com. And I'm Melrose Michaels, and you can find me at Melrose Michaels on social and melrosemichaels.com. 
Today's episode is sponsored by ePlay, an adult live streaming platform creating an online ecosystem for creators to engage with their fans that's easy, exciting, and empowering. At ePlay, you earn 80% of revenue on everything from live streaming to private messages with your fans to your sub club membership fan site. ePlay even allows you to earn money while you sleep with offline tips. Do what makes you excited, take control of your business, content, voice, and freedom as a creator consider joining ePlay today. Just a reminder, if you are enjoying the podcast on Apple, please leave us a five-star rating and review because it really helps us to grow as a podcast and better share information from our guests to the sex work community as a whole. Last but not least, if you want to support the podcast, please go to anchor.fm forward slash horizon spelled W-H-O-R-I-Z-O-N to become a premium subscriber of On the Horizon, which unlocks two bonus episodes on the 8th and 22nd of each month with tons of extra exclusive footage from ourselves and our guests.